Welcome to the DCMN Friday Series Podcast. DCMN is known as Disability Champions Mentoring Network, Inc. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. We are, we are this team who decided to host this wonderful podcast to um, bring light to the exceptional needs community. So... I believe that Sheena's going to introduce herself first, and then we're going to get the party going. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Katrina Hazel. I am the executive director and founder of Disability Champions Mentoring Network, Inc., a 501c3. I'm currently 29 years old, living with a disability called Theresa Posey, and I'm also a young woman of color, and I also have a Caribbean background. Um, Throughout my life, I have faced many adversities that have shaped me into who I am today. Well, I want to just give Trina some of her flowers right now. All of those things, you've done, you've done it all, you know, um, (laughs) with no holding back, you know, it's such a pride. I'm, I'm just so excited about this whole this whole podcast and how we're going to inform so many parents. So my name is Gracie Benedict Kane. I am the CEO founder of Braille Code Inc. Um, I'm a mother, I'm a married mother of three children. Um, and I am a 48 year old African American Hispanic woman. I'm also from, from I'm from Honduras. My family's born my family is from Honduras. And I am just ready to start this mission on um, really helping our parents like me. I have a visually impaired son and I have an autistic son. Um, And being a special needs parent has been very, very, uh, it's been trying, but learning and just very awesome to, and, and giving me pride to be the mother that I am. Yes. So I wanted to ask you, Trina, let's start off with you. Um, Let's discuss the mission of what this podcast is going to be. So the mission of this podcast um, is going to really help educate and inform parents and, and family members. But I know many of you guys may be wondering, like, how are we as a team and how I'm going to be able to use my organization to help bring voices of parents and different people to educate the world on how to help parents with children with disability. Because you may say, oh, she's not a mom, but I really um, watched my parents' journey raising me as a child with a disability. And I often reflect on my parents' journey, raising me and how they had to navigate different systems, different medical systems, different educational systems, and deal with um, the professionals that also had impossible expectations for me. Um, I'm also very passionate about people with disabilities and their families because many of my friends and family members have children, siblings, and loved ones with disabilities like ADHD, autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, and more. So it means so much to me. Um, but the true mission of the DCMN podcast is um, to build a unique, enthusiastic community to capture the voices of parents, caregivers, and families as well as professionals, service providers, and those with lived experiences to share the perspectives and uplift the voices of our mission and bring about change on issues that are important to us in the disability community and beyond. That's wonderful. And that's 
And the beauty of this is that we're going to be talking to professionals. We're going to be talking to therapists, doctors, parents like me with special needs children who can help parents who have children who are who they just maybe gave birth to or just don't have any type of direction on any type of advice or guidance. We're going to have these awesome parents on. Uh, we have a slew of different type of uh, people that we want to bring on, but it's mostly to just enlighten, educate, and help our community that we are just so passionate about. Yep. I often say that my parents' journey raising me was an open book. Mm, I love that. I love that. Elaborate more on that. What, what do you mean by that? Um. So the open book, I often describe it as um, they weren't really educated much on disability, um, disability in their country, which will be a totally a different topic. One day it's viewed as like a sense of shame. So um, they aren't even aware of certain disabilities and how to get the resources. So when they heard the term disability and especially the name of my diagnosis, they had no idea mm -hmm. what it was. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and basically, I'll give you guys a little background of my story is that um, I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at nine months old. And basically, the doctors didn't expect me to be able to see, walk, talk, or do anything like what they consider normal. So um, there were very low expectations of what my life would be like. Yeah. And it's the same for me, that when I had my child, I had no clue uh, really about having, especially children, and a child, and having someone, who, you know, they would, they told me, I knew that something was wrong with his with his vision. I knew that something was wrong because he his eyes were moving very rapidly. Um, and although at the time no one truly believed me, even the doctor herself, two month old Wani, my son, um, I had to just go in and tell her, look, turn off the lights, you know, put a flashlight in his eyes, take a look. And he wasn't following. And, you know, I was just as a parent, you're thrown into this to this world, not having any tools because yes, you can have a neurotypical child and okay, fine. But when the child has special needs, you have to learn a lot of things very quickly, very quickly. And you have to also make the choice that you're not going to worry about the shame. You're not going to worry about all the other things that are irrelevant because you have to really focus on this child and focusing on that child is is really going to change the trajectory of the child because you're setting yourself aside to become this parent that you're supposed to be. So this is such a, I love the angle that we're both coming in with it too. The fact that I am a parent and you are a, a special needs woman, you know, who has parents who have done the work, you know, um, and it shows in, in the way you are, your drive and everything that you have done for your community. And it's the same thing that I'm doing for my son in this community. So I, we have just, I, I, I'm so glad that we decided to do this. Let me just say, I'm so glad we both put our heads together. It's like you said, Gracie, let's do a podcast. No, like, yes, that is perfect. I didn't yeah. have a platform like this. Your mother did not have a platform like this, that they can actually come in and watch something and learn from it and ask questions after, which people, I'm telling you, whatever questions you have, please put it in the comments. We are going to quickly respond to any type of questions that you have. And even if you have anyone that you will want us to talk to, or you will want to actually um, contribute an idea, we're fine with that as well. Yep, I, I like to see like different family families and parents come together in one community space and be able to relate to each other. I think it's so powerful. It's super powerful. I I because it's not seen often. This type of realm of special needs 
is not really out there. It's not something that we that we see often that people could say, oh, oh, I, you know, this is interesting. Um, I should be more mindful of certain things. You know, it's not there. It's not there. And I think that it this is going to be powerful in the way of parents being able to see other parents. Yep. I often say that Disability Champions Mentoring Network will create a space a safe space for parents, families, and their children to come together. Yeah, and let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Let's let's bring them to the forefront, you know, and mm -hmm. let's let's talk about the hard times. Let's talk about the great times. Let's talk about the victories that that um our children are are are, are having and what they're going to have in the future and keep our minds focused on the great stuff that we that we've done. And that we're doing, you know, all of those, all of those things. This is why I'm excited about talking to the professionals, seeing what their experiences is like and seeing what they're expecting of parents, you know, and of our community. Even what they're expecting in the field of um, people with disabilities and other conditions as well. Yes. And, and the spectrum is so wide and, and vast, you know, um, and that's the beauty of it too, is that there's so many to tackle um, and to discuss and to uh, enlighten, you know, so I'm really looking forward to all of it. And as a mother of a visually impaired child, I also wanted to mention um, the visual here and our background. So Trina is sitting, she is a, a wheelchair bound woman. She is sitting with a logo in the back of, of the Disability Champions Mentoring Network. And I'm sitting in my office with a white background with a white sweater. And I am uh, an African-American woman as well as Trina. Um, so that is the background. And that is what you're, what, what you're visualizing on top of what you're hearing at this point not visualizing, but what you can vision at this point um, with us talking right now. Had to put that in because we have to do a description, you know, so we have yep. to consider so many things. Yeah. So I also think that's great. So I will <laughs> share a little bit about who I am currently am today. I am an advocate, um, I say for everyone, not just for people with disabilities, but I feel like I'm an advocate for everyone that I come across. Um, I'm a motivational speaker. I am former Miss Wheelchair in New York 2018. Um, my platform focused it on bringing self-advocacy into schools and making it more inclusive. So it truly blossomed my journey into who I am today and what I'm currently doing. I'm a blogger. Um, I'm currently a certified professional coach, life coach mm. um, with a variety of topics and specialties. A college graduate with an associate's degree from King's Park Community College. Ooh. My major was in liberal arts. Um, and I'm currently an author of my very own book called Special Education to College, The Katrina Story, Breaking Those Glass Ceilings. Mm -hmm. And I'm also an advocate lead for the Regional Center for Workforce Transformation. Yeah, I actually turned my back because I was going to go get your book. But I was like, it's too far up there <laughs> inside the my library. There. Um, and to tell you a little bit about myself, I am an author of a children's book called What's Cool About Borough Code School. And I am also an inventor. I created labels in Braille to help the blind and visually impaired and also children who are learning their left from right. So my label has directional cues. Um, the letter R for right, the letter L for left, and um, it helps it helps individuals as well as people who are blind to put their shoes on correctly or anything that has a component on left and right. So um, I also am working on life coaching uh, through Katrina and through her. <laughs> 
uh, her help on that. Uh, we are podcasters also. We used to add that to your list. Uh, yeah. Podcaster, you know, um, also just one of my best things. Uh, the best thing that I am is a mother um, and working hard on being on, on uplifting and inspiring and really just honing my children's crafts to be who they are and helping the community with everything that I know and um, really helping them see things differently within Braille Code Inc. and within my experience as a mother with a visually impaired child. That's awesome. I think um, all of those things um, just shows how, how powerful um, parents of children with um, unique needs or um, other abilities can be once they come together and realize that they're not alone. It's so needed. Yeah. I think um, having a special needs child could devastate a parent. It can really devastate a parent. It could freeze them. It could make them stagnant. Um, it can devastate them and it causes them not to be able to move forward because they're kind of stuck in the situation of having a special needs child. Um, I think that it takes another type of mindset. I, I am a Christian. I, I, I am a faithful woman of God and, um, I really had used him and my parents, of course, as a force to be and get out of my way and, and, and inform myself and educate myself. And, um, really the beauty I think with parents is watching your child and watching them do things that you didn't think that they could do and be like, Oh my God, I need to really show them how to do it better and let me show them something else and my thing the one thing I love to tell parents is that set yourself aside I always say that set yourself aside and watch your child and I promise you that you're going to learn from them I always say that Wani gave birth to me he did give birth to me he he gave me life he gave me a mission and um when I chose to set myself aside and watch him and learn him I then started to hone all the greatness in him and just help him through it, help him through it. Almost like being a teacher or just observing and writing things down, you know, like, oh, he did this today. Oh, okay. You know, so I'm going to teach him how to do this. I'll never forget when he started to walk, he started to walk at 19 months and he picked up something off the floor, lost my mind. I lost my mind because as a mother of a visually impaired child, I still to this point do not know what his visual capacity is. But by watching him and asking him questions, I have a pretty, you know, um a pretty bet what a better understanding and knowing of his sight capacity. So when he picked mm -hmm. up the floor, I said, okay, I have to teach him color. I noticed that he knew contrast. So he will walk, I will walk closely by him and he would stop if he sees another color in front of him either it be carpet or something darker than what he was walking in previously I knew okay he has contrast I, I taught him color anytime we walk down the street to this day he is 16 years old now I ask him what does he see what colors does he see you know and that kind of brings him about to even be a person to speak more about the things that he sees you know so I think that by learning and, and watching your child, you're going to learn so much on how to help them really reach their highest capacity. That's amazing. Um, there's this quote, I'm not sure if I'm quoting it correctly, but it's almost to say that your, your child may not be the garden you imagine, but let them create their own unique way of doing things. So even though you may not have expected your child to be in a particular situation, allow them to create their own unique pathway to what their unique garden is going to be for them. 
yes. and just help them grow. Absolutely. It's it's all about allowance. It's really about allowing them because I think sometimes people think we need to do things a certain way. And there is, for me, no such thing as normal and no such thing as doing something one way. There are many ways to do one thing, you know, um, and also the key of mourning a situation. You have to mourn your expectations of yeah. your child. You have to lay that to rest to really let go and start to really see things for what they are and embrace it so that then it, it'll it'll strengthen you to be the parent you're supposed to be. Oh, that was good. I should have, I got to write that down. <laughs> that was good. Yep, Thank you. I, that was good. I think um, also, it's also important to empower the person with a disability as well on their journey because eventually they're going to come across moments where they're going to feel like um, they haven't really embraced their own unique abilities and that'll become a struggle. So you want to be able to be there to support them. I think that empowerment that you, you're talking about is also a shield. Because the world is going to come and tell you, you, you can't do that. You, you, you're not able to do that. How many conversations have we had, you and I, about people saying, giving you your limit, your limitation saying she can't do this. She can't do that. You know, I've, I've spoken to Wani about that same subject that, you know, your capacity and you have your own voice. So you need to always use it because you're going to be doubted. You're going to, people are going to doubt you just by the way you look, mm -hmm. just by your appearance. They'll talk to your mother. They'll talk to me instead of talking to you or to Wani, which kind of, wow which kind of pisses me off a little bit. It annoys me, you know, it, but it's really the ignorance of it, which is why this podcast, once again, is so important. It's this ignorance there that the moment you see someone in a wheelchair or the moment you see someone in a cane or any type of use that they need to for accessibility and to get around, they quickly think that there's a huge limitation that you maybe you don't even talk. You know, maybe you can't even vocalize how you, so they go directly to your aid, which is a parent or an actual aid. Oh, how, what is her name? Or what is his name? Is it, ask, ask him, ask her, ask her. She can talk. Yep. They definitely do that. I experience that so often. Uh, and a little powerful note to you guys is that I grew up very shy. So, right. um, Oftentimes, when I'm out in the community with either my parents or my siblings or whoever I'm with, um, it's often that question when I was younger, oh, can she speak? And my parents would be like, she's right there. Ask her. Right. So I think because they came with that perception already, it's like, to me, like, it took me a while to, like, find my own voice and um, speak up for myself because I was already seeing how people were perceiving it and right. always being, like, so judgmental. Yes. And, and, and kudos to your parents for saying, ask her, because there are parents who would say, oh, she can speak. She's just shy. And by doing that, it'll hinder the person from talking to you. This is like, if she's shy, let me just leave her alone. No, they said, ask her so that you can be the, your own voice. You it, know, it's almost um, like I'll share an experience. I never really spoke too much to my own godmother for eight years. And every time she would come to like see me, um, she would be like, so you're going to talk today? And I had like this big smile on my face. And one one time she came and she was like, are you going to speak today? If you're not going to speak today, then I'm leaving. So again, the big smile on my face. And then um, eventually, like I got connected like on social media 
and um we became friends on like social media so obviously I started sharing my story more and that's how we even got more connected and I actually started like oh, opening up to her and speaking to her so um like it's amazing how technology can really help a person change the way they see the world right so my question to you is what what made you or what pushed you because now you're a motivational speaker that's part of your that's part of your titles here what made you start saying i'm going to vocalize i'm going to be more vocal i'm going to speak my mind i'm going to encourage my community um well that's a really great question that actually goes into why i created disability champions mentoring network um it's really truly after my experience in the public school system um from k to 12 um my experience as a student with a disability um ranged from really inclusive to really um not inclusive mm. and where um they didn't really take the time to get to know me um especially when i went to um middle school i had this one experience on at a particular school where um for my eighth grade senior trip um they didn't take the time to purchase um a coach bus that was accessible so they made a suggestion to ask if my father can take a day off from work wow to take me on my senior trip on a trip and and i was like we were like wait something is wrong with that picture so there was an opportunity where uh, my teacher gave us an assignment to write a persuasive um letter mm about an issue that was important to us he gave us two options to either write about no longer being a uniform school or better school lunch those are the typical things that teachers usually choose but i choose to, to write a letter to my school principal about wow. why <laughs> yeah why i wasn't um allowed to go on my senior trip and why my dad should have to take a day off from work to take me on my senior trip when at that time he was the only and still today basically I describe my dad as the only um, financial provider for the home so mm -hmm. I questioned why should he have to take a day off from work to take me um so I advocate, that's my way of advocating. I advocated a lot in the beginning through writing mm -hmm. before I became like a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. But the main part of like what builds me into who I am today was um, my high school experience. Um, I went to a public mainstream high school Okay. I was the only one in a wheelchair in my entire high school. Mm -hmm. um, I received um, special education support. So like I was in a self-contained class with some kind of mainstream settings from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, and people may be wondering like, wow, how did she be able to accomplish so much? and she received special education supports. I want to say that special education supports aren't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It just helped me with my slow pace of learning and mm -hmm. being able to process things. Mm -hmm. And my physical ability also mm -hmm. kind of took place in all of those makes. Um, 
but when I was in my senior year in high school or earlier, um, there was no proper transition plan for me. So the only option they recommended to me at the time was a day program. Um, a day program is where a lot of individuals with disabilities go and spend their day. Um, Are they being educated? Yeah, it's basically like, I unfortunately describe it as a adult daycare center for people with disabilities. That's what it sounds like. And I'm like, <laughs> are they being, is anybody, are they teaching? Are they just placing they have, you somewhere? They're, 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 they're supposed to be providing educational and academics or recreational, mm -hmm. like daily life skills supports, computer skills, and things like that. That's the description of it um so say if we see those things actually happening um there's a lot of different kind now so um that's what their recommendation for me was because of my many physical disabilities and needing services and supports they felt like college wouldn't be able to provide those things for me so they felt college was impossible. Mm -hmm. And that, so, is, that is the segue for me where it comes to Wani. He is now a junior in high school. And um, I'm now in the preparations of getting him into college, making sure that he gets all the services that he needs. And this is a college setting. It's a different setting. It's a different way to get an aid, you know, aid for him. There's a different, it's all different because it's not under pretty much a, a DOE type, you know, uh, system where things are provided in a way, but with, when, with college, this is a whole nother world for me. Um, so to be continued basically on that. Uh, and yeah. I saw the importance of mentorship, which is something that disability champions mentoring networks provide. I really saw that importance of it when I was going to college because I realized when I went to college um yes I was able to have my aid accompany me but there weren't there were certain restrictions and limitations on what they can do and how they can support me on a college campus and I had a paraprofessional it's like a teacher's aid when I was in high school Yes. Or throughout my school, public school journey. Mm -hmm. So I really saw the impact that they had on me when I was in school. And I realized I don't have the same type of support that I, while I'm in college, like I have the academic advisors that I can go to for mm -hmm. help. But I feel like um, the paraprofessionals provided us with not only academic support but like emotional support as well and I think on my college journey um that was something that was missing so I think mentorship is important yeah. on many different levels for young people in general and students with disabilities yeah but when it comes to that realm that space of special needs, uh, college students, there's nothing that's like solely provided for them in these settings, you know? So it's something with your network, thank God, the network is here to provide things like that and have an avenue for kids in college. Because again, the special needs community has to fight always. We always have to fight to get the things that we need because it's not readily there and available for us. It's never yeah. readily available for us, you know? So that's the thing that we need to, um, we hope to kind of enforce within within the realms that we're gonna be in. Yeah, and I, um, the mission of like the Disability Champion <laughs> Mentoring Network organization as a whole, besides my personal experience, 
is really to um, enhance the special education transitioning programming for underserved youth with disabilities, which I describe as student champions, mm. and support and empowerment through the development of specialized mentors, mm -hmm. mentor champions, to help create an enthusiastic community of support, which is network champions. Uh, I'm one of them, and I'm basically all of them when it comes to disability champions. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just the, the leader, but I'm also navigating the way for others to show different paths and possibilities. Um, one of the um, missions and quotes that we um, live by within Disability Champions is one champion, one mentor, many pathways at a time. There it is. And yeah, I'll elaborate on it. It really means that you don't really have to have one pathway to your future. There's many different pathways, but with that one champion by your side, many doors can open. And there you are. You're the warrior and the champion. You know, you are one of the champions and then decided to do a whole uh, 501c3 to create more champions out there. You know, so um, I am so looking forward to everything that this podcast is going to instill and inspire. And um, we also want to actually bring up um, our next podcast. You know, our next podcast is going to be um, for the end of this month, right? The end of February is this going to be, we're going to, we're going to post yep. up. So at the end of February, we're going to post up um, the last week, our podcast is every last Friday of the month, we are going to be posting up and airing our podcast Friday series, okay? So our first one up, our first guest is going to be a speech pathologist named Susie Solano. She has over 20 plus years experience in this field. Um, she's going to be She's super excited about coming on. It'll be her first time actually doing a podcast. Um, but she is going to share her expertise and her experience in her field. Um, she is not just your regular speech. Without. She just loves what she does. She loves the field that she is in. Um, and it's going to be very, it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's going to be very informative for everyone not only for parents, it's for communities, it's going to be informative for a lot of people. So we're very much looking forward um, to talking to Susie Solano and seeing what she's all about. Yep, I'm so excited to have her on as a guest as well. I love to hear about passionate providers that's doing their work out in the field and just see their outlook on their journey as well as they provide supports to our upcoming generation of students and young people as well. Absolutely. I love that we're going to see her view on everything and 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 her and giving us her honest opinion and feelings on what she has experienced for over 20 plus years. She's been she's been in in this field strongly and um and willingly, you know, through this field with with uh being a speech pathologist. So uh, that'll be for February 23rd. It's going to air. Yeah. 23rd of February. So she should be getting, you know, we'll be airing that one. So you guys could take a look. Once again, always uh, send your comments um, and questions of anything. Questions and feedback. Yes. Feedback. All, all of the things that you want to actually know about this podcast and we really are excited we're just looking forward to the whole thing we have so we have people lined up so we're looking forward to seeing what you all feel about us and what we're doing yeah thank you guys for watching our first introduction series to the dcmn Friday series podcast and looking forward to hearing from you 
and seeing many different voices come together and create a powerful change. That's right. 